you can't even you can't even imagine what we went through. But other than that, I think that's it. I started at the age of twelve. My first jail time was three days at the age of twelve. People in America and Sumter County has no idea what we went through because they didn't know. They did not know, and, and no one can talk about that stockade but these girls. I knew that was back then. Okay, can we go in? Yes, ma'am, it's open. Okay. You're going that way, you're going this way, yeah. Okay. We didn't go in that way. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. In the city, it was a, during that time, was a, a very violent civil rights movement. Um, that started and we were protesting as children. My grandmother started taking me to mass meetings out in the country and going with her, I became very concerned about the issues. Not being able to eat in restaurants, not being able to drink out of the same water fountain, those type things were just injustices. I was told by the mass meeting and I asked, what is a mass meeting? It's a gathering of people. We're going to come together and we're going to talk about the situation that's going on right here in Sumter County, America's Georgia. I attended mass meetings for over a year before I, you know, went to jail. And how old were you in 63? I was 13. On the day that I was arrested, uh, we was marching at the uh, Martin Theater. There was a white side at the Martin Theater and there was a black side. They refused us the, of tickets to purchase. Evidently, the young lady who was selling the tickets must have called the police department. All of a sudden, we had a rush of policemen coming down to that area. This wasn't here. It was old. The bathroom wasn't here. It was one toilet back here on the side, and then it was a different shower here. Mm. But this was our home. I, I joined the uh, demonstration over at Allen Chapel. When we got there, we knelt down and prayed in front of the police station. And when we let, knelt down to pray, uh, Chief Chambers came out and asked us to disperse, and we did not. So they herded us like cows. I thought we were going to jail in Americas. No, they sent us out of town to Dawson, Georgia transfer truck, a 16-wheeler, waiting for us at the back of the jail. And they put us on that dog transfer truck, and we had to stand up all the way to Dawson. But, but the moment they closed that back door, it was dark. I couldn't see, we couldn't see one or the other in that truck. This was our home. Mm. This was our home. Mm -hmm. Before the bad Lord day. This was our home. Well, this is the first time I've been back. This is my first time back down here. Even when Essence Magazine came, I didn't come. Me? What's it like? <laughs> That's all right, baby. That's all right. It's genuine. Parents knew that we was in Dawson, but now you're moving us from Dawson. Nobody know where we are. We didn't even know where we were. So we were pushed in this dirty stockade, old stockade that, that had been closed down I assume, for years and years with no facility, no bed, and um, no water, no commode, no running commode. We slept on the hard, cold cement floor. When we got there, we were put in a sweat box overnight with a 12-year-old there. Can't understand it. You know, like you go to prison and they, what they call it, when they put you in the hole? Right. That's what this was. It drained all the water from our bodies. And when we walked out, the floor was full. There was a Wait. puddle of water on the floor. Only one guard, an older gentleman. Uh, we call him Pops. His last name we found out was Mr. Countryman that wore bib overalls. One of the girls was so small that the uh, God would take her out. He would take her over in the room with him and feed her. Sand. Sand. Sandra. Sandra, okay, Sand. Sandra. He would feed Sand and give her a little stuff and she'd come back and share. And while she was there, uh, 
Mr. Story, the dog catcher, would come, and he said, uh, your parents need to know. And so he went around on Sunday morning to the parents' house and let the parents know where their kids were. When I first came back, I still didn't shed no tears. But my cousin, Sandra, she come out there and she drive down here and sit on the lot out there. And the workers used to come out there and check and make sure she was all right. She said she feel like a piece of her was always left here. One of the stockade young girl, uh, girls wow. who was sitting on the floor in the picture that you see, at the time she did not know, we did not know, uh, that she was pregnant. She had no idea. But today she has a healthy son yeah. who's a veteran, thank God. When we got out of the stockade, school had already started. Nobody greeted us or had any kind of reception when we got out. Everybody went back to their own in, little environment. Right. So we never talked to each other about it. We never said a word. We Nobody ever said anything to make us feel like, you know, they were going to help us come up and come up to par. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just something that looked like it was just closed. It was just closed, and none of us, it was, it, yeah, it was just everybody just shut down. And my mom would just cry, cry, because she was so worried about me. And she, as she would try to talk, and every time she would talk, say, ask me something, I just ran out of the house. In fact, I'd go get under the house. <laughs> yeah. We want this to serve as a good lesson for our children all over the world, not just here locally. And I feel that, I feel like, you know, that nomination will, will help us uh, uh, bring closure to some of the things that we've been searching for.